Hi YouTube, it's Carrie here from Foster's Fields Soy Candles and Handmade Soap. Today I am making some cold process soap. It is uh, my gardener soap. Um, I'm almost out of it and it's coming up to that time of the year. Um, not only do gardeners like this soap, but mechanics as well. Uh, my husband does a lot of work with cars and he prefers this soap over that tub of mechanic soap that he's used for years. Um, anyway, I've got everything all measured out here. I'm just going to point you down and see if we can get everybody nice and close here. Okay, so I have everything measured out. I have some colorant here, um, Blue Lagoon Mica, which I'm going to add to it. In this container here, I have kaolin clay and coconut milk. I have some pumice measured out in here. And this is a fragrance oil blend. There is lime fivefold in this, um, bergamot, um, spruce, and cedar wood. I'm actually changing the scent of this soap just a little bit, and hopefully, everybody likes it as much as the other one. I'm also changing the colors. Um, same recipe, but hopefully, a little bit better. This is activated charcoal. Everything that I do here is measured out um, by weight. Some soapers like to do things by tablespoons. I started doing that and then slowly over the years I've changed over so that everything I do is by weight. So let's get started. My oils are a little bit warm still but I think that's okay. So before I start I'm going to go ahead and put the um, coconut milk powder. This is powder that's been had water added to it that came from my lye water to reconstitute it. So let's get that in. I'm going to give that a buzz before I do anything else. Get this out of the way. Okay, we've got that in there. Sorry, it's going to get loud. So I've just blended that up a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my lye water. That. Now I put my lye water over my spatula just to avoid some bubbles. My spatula, it's probably hard to see by the video, but my spatula is quite low to the water. So we get as few bubbles as possible in the soap. Alright, in goes the lye. I usually try and do it a bit slower, but okay. I want this soap to be a fairly thick trace because the pumice will sink to the bottom if it's not fairly thick. So here goes. Sorry about the noise. <clears throat> okay, so here's my blend. I'm going to go ahead and add that in. <clears throat> oh, it smells yummy. This is a new blend for me. I was just kind of playing around with some essential oils that are my favorites and some of them that are new. I bought some spruce and I bought some cedar wood. Um, I buy my essential oils from New Directions, uh, New Directions Aromatics, and so far I've had really good luck with them. They s you always smell really nice, but I particularly really like the cedar wood that I just bought. It. I'm going to eventually make a men's soap with um, some of those essential oils that I got. I got a rosewood there as well. It was really, it really smelled nice. I make my men's shaving soap with it, uh, rosewood and mint in that one. And oh my, is it ever good? Okay, so I think we got that uh, mixed in. So I'm just gonna get a little container. Sorry, I'm vibrating you guys. Put that to the side. Oh my, that smells so good. Oh my my. Okay, so where's my? So 
I just use these little pour containers. I found these on Amazon. So I'm just I'm not I don't really want a whole lot of this, so I'm just gonna add just a little bit so I can put a little bit on the top. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to put in the activated charcoal. First I'm going to give it a my little mix here. I just put a little bit of water, some of my lye water in with this as well. So it just has been sitting here in the water for a little bit, so I'm just giving it a bit of a mix. In it goes. I'm usually careful with activated charcoal because it can make one heck of a mess. Make sure everything is stirred in. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to put this pumice in here as well. that in there. My trace is fairly fairly thick at this point so it shouldn't really sink. And I just used my spoon for my colorant that I was going to use uh, for my colorant in my charcoal. So I need a new one. Just when I thought I was organized. Okay so I'm going to put just about a quarter teaspoon of this this is Blue Lagoon Mica, but after using this, um, this mica morphs to a really pretty green in cold process soap. So, and some of sometimes my colors will morph and then go back. I have one pink color that morphs to yellow, and the first time I used it, I was quite upset because I was doing a pink soap. But anyways, it, once it started to cure, it came back to the pink, which I was kind of surprised that that was the first time I've ever had that happen. But this one, I don't know if you can see here, it does, um, it's blue in the bottle, but it's actually, it's really pretty green. So I'll get that all mixed in. And I'm just gonna get myself a spatula to get that better um, in there. Okay, so I'll just get into all the corners of that green, get everything scraped off. I like it all the bits of soap I want into the soap. So we'll just get that all mixed in. Before I started this, I also had my line, uh, mold lined. I try and get everything going so I have everything I need before I start. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of this as well. Oh my goodness, I wish you guys could smell that. I just, oh my goodness, it smells good. Okay, so scrape everything off the side because if you don't, not sure if you can see that, I just scraped the side of my pot. Good thing I did, because then they had non-colored soap up the side of my pot. So you'll have that non-colored soap in your bar if you don't get it all off the side of the pot. So we'll just get all that mixed in. All from the bottom, get everything all mixed in. Usually I've left these bars uncolored, kind of plain with kind of a caramel color actually with, with, by the time I get the fragrance oil into it. And then with a little bit lighter caramel on top. And But this time I decided I was going to do something different. So here goes. <clears throat> and charcoal, one of the properties of charcoal is it absorbs odors. So I kind of thought that would just be a nice little added addition to this soap. I'm still getting stuff the bottom that's not mixed. Mix in, you darn soap. Mix in. It's coming for right from the corners. My spatula is sticking because of the pumice. Okay, I think we got it. Just gonna get these things out of my way. Whoops, color doesn't go in the sink. Okay, here we have my mold that I already have lined. I'm gonna clean up this bit of a mess too before I go. Uh, I don't like all the soapy mess all over when I'm trying to work, so I try and keep things clean. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's easy. Okay, let's go ahead and pour this. So I'm going to. My should make sure that I'm in the shot here. I'm going to put the majority of this into here. Then I'm going to put the green. This is 
a really nice contrast. Scrape everything out of there as best I can get it. I'm just gonna give this a quick tap on the floor here. Whoops, it's gonna get loud. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to swirl that first. Actually, no, I'm not. Oh, darn. New soap. Can't make up my mind. I'm just going to use this to get it gently over top so it doesn't break through too, too much. Just like that. Okay. Sorry, you've got the butt end of my pot here. I need to think that through a little better. Get all that good soap into the mold. I should enlist the help of my 15 year old to help me do movies. Except for that I always do it, I like to make soap on my days off when, from my day job, when my kids are not here, so, and that includes my teenager. Nice to have the time off, but it's also nice to have the help. Okay, so we'll get my hanger tool here. And with my hanger, I'm just going to go down, and I usually go across the bottom, and then down through the middle, and, down. and then I go down just a little bit over aside from the middle, and then just a little bit over, and then up. Okay, that probably didn't make any sense for <laughs> now that I'm thinking of it. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to clean up the edge of my mold here a little bit. And so right now it just looks kind of plain, but in about 10 minutes after I've done some cleanup, I'm going to come back and fluff up the, um, the top. So I will be back. Okay, so I just let the soap set for a few more minutes. It's being a bit finicky on me here, so I'm just going to go in and uh, lightly scoop up the sides of the soap. It's not really wanting to cooperate today, but that's okay. Sometimes you cannot fight with the soap. It just does what it wants to do. And I had to pick up my kids in like five minutes from school, so I really don't have time to fight with the soap today. Otherwise, I would probably win that battle. Today, I am not going to win this, the battle. So we're just going to Try and put some pretty little scallops across the top, but they're not staying super well. But I'm pretty sure this darn soap knows I had to pick the kids up and it's just giving me a hassle. That's okay. We'll just do our best to make it look nice. And then we're gonna cut it tomorrow and it's going to look awesome on the inside. I'm just wondering if I could get, I didn't scoop that. Ah, that wasn't very smart. Naughty smart move, Gary. Oh, there, that's better. There. That, just that couple of minutes extra makes a big difference. So let's just try that the other side. There. Mm. Talk nice to the soap and sometimes it listens. Not always, but sometimes. Okay, and there it goes. So what I'm going to do the top of this one is um, spray it with alcohol. I don't very often get soda ash on my soaps. Um, not really something that concerns me. A few of my soaps do. I think it's the fragrance oil um, is causing it, but most of my soaps don't. So it's, it's kind of a cosmetic thing. It's not something that bothers me. But anyways, there is my gardener soap. Stay tuned um, for the cutting. I'm going to cut it after it's been sitting for 24 hours. 